With Metroid Dread, the Chozo, a civilization of bird people who drive much of the backstory of the Metroid series, are finally stepping into the spotlight. Long thought by the cosmos to be extinct, Samus is set to encounter living members of the bird species in-game for the first time in the latest installment of the Metroid series. But against convention, these Chozo are very clearly hostile towards Samus and attack her on sight, seemingly acting as the main antagonists of Dread. Who are the members of this last remaining Chozo faction? And what exactly are their aims? This video aims to explore these questions, although first it is necessary to understand the history of these birdmen. The earliest history of the Chozo is given to us not in game, but in an interview with series overseer Yoshio Sakamoto. In a Q&A session, he explains that in the distant past, they were a violent warrior race who possessed advanced technology and were proud of their fighting strength. The pieces of artwork he was referring to here also show the Chozo in some rather primitive looking armor, far cry from the suit Samus wears, that are not technological in the slightest, indicating these pieces of art reflect the Chozo at one of their earliest known points, as a whole. Sakamoto also explains that due to their long lives, the fertility of the Chozo decreased, and they became a non-violent race as a result. This is more in line with how we see the Chozo described in game. A race of peaceful explorers who seek to find the truth about life in the universe. This stage of the Chozo's history is explored in Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, which features the floating city of Skytown that was created on the planet Elysia by the Chozo thousands of years before the games. They lived in this city for centuries, exploring the cosmos from within it via satellites and sharing their knowledge as gifts to the people of nearby planets. In this era, the Chozo also developed their warriors' armor further and invented the first incarnations of the technological power suit, which strongly resembled their older armor. This is indicated by a Chozo statue from Skytown, that wears a more advanced looking power suit, and the presence of the bust of Drin, who was a key scientist in the development of this technology. The Chozo of Elysia also created the biomechanical Elysians, who eventually governed Skytown after the Chozo decided it was time for them to leave Skytown and Elysia behind. These Chozo went on to settle on Talon 4 and became the Chozo tribe featured in the backstory of Metroid Prime. Choosing to eschew advanced technology, they instead wanted to live in harmony with nature, and over the long years some of them developed several mystical abilities. However, they did not completely give up technology, as they held onto several pieces of power suit technology, the very same pickups Samus collects during the events of Metroid Prime. The beams found on Talon 4 indicate at least some of these pieces of tech were developed by these Chozo, as they use natural elements as opposed to the more technologically advanced beams found in the 2D Metroid games. The plasma beam from Metroid Prime in particular uses heat and fire, as opposed to the green electrical plasma beam of the 2D games, and has radically different functions and purpose overall from its counterpart in the 2D Metroid games. Meanwhile, a different group of Chozo settled on the planet SR388 to study the presence of the mystical energy known as Aeon there. Eventually, these Chozo inadvertently discovered the X-Parasites on the planet, and so created the Metroids to combat them before they could completely consume all life on the planet and possibly all life beyond. However, the Metroids unexpectedly evolved as time went on and turned on the Chozo. And so, the Chozo of SR388 were forced to seal the Metroids underground with a highly corrosive purple liquid as they fled to the surface. They then called for help and were approached by a group of Chozo who killed most, if not all, of them. These evil Chozo are the same ones that we see in Dread, with the exception that one of the Chozo seen in Dread may instead be a survivor of this extinction of SR388. So, how do these groups of Chozo relate to each other? Of particular note is that the technology of the SR388 Chozo is more advanced than that of the Talon 4 Chozo. The beams in Metroid Prime do not stack, which is to say that each beam power up collected in Prime is a separate weapon that cannot be accessed at the same time. The beams from SR388 are stackable. Each time Samus collects a beam in Samus Returns, its power and functionality is added to the beam weapon Samus already has. The exception to this is the Ice Beam which was likely made by the Chozo specifically to dispatch Metroids, so they went rogue, since the creature's only weakness is the cold. This also explains why this beam does not stack, as it would have been developed in a hurry as they were pushed back. Power suits of the SR388 Chozo also look more refined than those depicted in statues on Elysia and Talon 4. 
Other power-ups found from SR388 are also more advanced than those found from Alicia and Talon 4. Spider Ball from Metroid Prime 3 can only attach itself to magnetic rails, while the one in Sam's Returns can cling to any surface provided it is not slippery or spiky and can anchor itself to the ground against forces like strong wind. Space Jump Boots from Metroid Prime and the Screw Attack from Metroid Prime 3, which Elysian Choso gifted to the Reptilicus of the planet Brio, are also less advanced than the Space Jump found on SR388. These power-ups from the Prime games only allow Samus to jump a limited number of times, while the Space Jump in Samus Returns allows for infinite jumping. All of this indicates that the Choso on SR388 were more advanced technologically than the Elysian Choso. Given that the technological power suits were invented on Elysia, it seems likely that the Choso from SR388 originated there as well, since they also had power suit technology. Instead of eschewing this technology then, the Choso of SR388 would have continued to research it and build on it, which is in line with the fact that they came to SR388 for study. The research into life energy such as Aeon also lines up with Elysian Choso, who managed to create sentient mechanical life. So perhaps this is a continuation of that line of research. The Choso of SR388 continued the pursuit of knowledge and science, while the Choso of Talon 4 gave up science to grow their spiritual prowess. But where do the group of renegade Choso fit into this story? It is my belief that these Choso lived on Talon 4 hidden among the spiritualists and later fled to Zebes after Talon 4 was decimated due to being hit by a Leviathan. But to properly explain this, a lot of factors need to be considered. The first of these is that the seeming leader of the evil Chozo wields an advanced power suit and arm cannon, even in the Chozo memory showing the past, which seems contrary to the character of the Talon Chozo. However, on Talon 4 it can be observed that these Chozo do seem to hold warriors in some esteem, as there are effigies honoring warriors across the planet, and multiple statues with power suit-like elements, particularly the shoulders. These statues are wearing armor on their torsos and ropes around their legs. The design of the shoulders is different from regular power suits, but we do see it somewhere else, on the leader of the evil Chozo. Of note is also that this individual hides their power suit and arm cannon behind a cloak in the Chozo memories from Samus Returns. Perhaps then this more advanced suit was developed in secret, and the leader hides it so as to not tip off any of the other Chozo. But what became of these Chozo? In Prime 3, it is mentioned that the, when the Leviathan hit Talon 4, some survivors managed to vanish to places unknown. The planet Zebes is located in the same solar system as Talon 4, and also has an orbit that comes extremely close to it at times. The Chozo who lived on Zebes also arrived in a spaceship that crash landed on the planet for unknown reasons. If they were the survivors of Talon 4, this would make sense, as these survivors would have been in quite a hurry to get away from the spreading corruption of Phazon. It is important to mention that Sakamoto stated that Zebes was only settled after the SR388 massacre, an attack we see lines up as well. On Zebes, there is a stackable ice beam, which stands in contrast to the non-stackable ice beams of SR388 and Talon 4. And there is a power-up called the Speed Booster, which does not appear in any prior Chozo settlement. Of note here is that in time, the Zebesian Chozo built a Chozodia complex around their wrecked ship. The building contains many depictions of ancient Chozo warriors, and most notably, a mural of a power suit clad Chozo. Though appearing older in design, the Japanese name of this mural is quite revealing, Chozo War Gold. It seems that Chozodia complex is some sort of temple dedicated to this war gold, who seems to be wearing an Elysian era power suit. This seems very out of character for most of the Chozo we have seen, while it is very in character for the violent Chozo we feature in Metroid Dread. The design of the power suit seen in many of the murals not depicted in the War God is also in line with the statues from Talon 4, an armored torso with legs covered in robes. So far, this connection seems rather thin still, but it becomes stronger when the seeming motives of the evil Choso are considered. Why did they massacre the people of SR388? Was it to ensure the knowledge of the Metroids and the ex-parasites died with them? Creatures that could be used as bioweapons and usher in a new age of Choso dominance? Perhaps over many years, a group of the Chozo grew wary of the spiritualistic and pacifistic ways and yearned for the days of old where the Chozo were still warriors. This may explain why the Zebesian mural depict ancient Chozo, why the Chozodia complex is dedicated to a war god. 
Metroid DNA does seem to be what the Chozo Metroid Dread are after, after all. Their leader confronts Samus and easily overpowers her, but does not kill her for some reason. Instead, she is thrown into the depths of the planet CDR, among the many dangerous Emmy, robots specifically designed for the purpose of extracting DNA that have been seemingly corrupted by the evil Chozo. Crucial here is that by the time we arrive at Dread's place in the Metroid timeline, Samus is the bearer of the last remaining Metroid DNA in existence. It seems that the evil Chozo are after that DNA, as they also seemingly lured Samus to CDR with the footage of an ex-parasite which Samus wants to ensure is extinct. General idea is also supported by the presence of what seems to be biological weapon experimentation labs in Metroid Dread. With this motive in mind, there are two factors surrounding the Chozo on Talon 4 and Zebes that become highly suspicious. The first is the existence of Metroid Prime, a single Metroid that somehow found its way inside the corpse of the Leviathan on Talon 4 and became the guardian of its core. However, where did this Metroid come from? There is a popular idea that it is one of the Metroids that the space pirates who settled on Talon 4 and Metroid Prime brought with them. It would have mutated into a phasal Metroid, which can pass through walls and phased into the impact crater. However, these Metroid types can seemingly not pass through energy fields, as seen with the phasal Metroids in Metroid Processing on the pirate homeworld in Metroid Prime 3. This is of significance because the Leviathan was surrounded by an energy field by the Chozo known as the Cradle. Furthermore, Phasal Metroids come from being directly exposed to the pure Phasal of Dark Samus, explained in the same room from Metroid Prime 3, the Metroid Processing. Metroid Prime in the first Metroid Prime game also possesses several attacks that seem to be based on the Chozo beams Samus finds on Talon 4 throughout the game. There is speculation that these are space pirate designed replicas but this ideally holds little water under scrutiny. For one, any pirate replicas need to be based on the pirates encounter with Samus from Zero Mission, not those of Talon 4, due to when this research starts according to the pirate logs. This causes a particular issue with the plasma beam, which does not in any way resemble its 2D counterpart that appeared in Zero Mission. Metroid Prime also wields a missile launcher and a grapple beam, which are never mentioned or shown to be replicated by the pirates. The Metroid that becomes Metroid Prime then, must have obtained these from Chozo technology and weaponry, and so was around when the Chozo still lived on Talon 4. But in that case, where did it come from? It's possible that the evil Chozo took a single larva with them for study back from SR388, but lost it once the Leviathan hit. There is a secondary passage to the surface of SR388 that allows Metroid larvae to enter the surface from the core of their nest after hatching, which was not sealed. Perhaps the evil Chozo dug this passage in their first place to get to the Metroids. The other suspicious element is the existence of Other Brain, the organic supercomputer the Zebesian Chozo built to control the systems of Zebes. In Metroid Other M, it is mentioned that Mother Brain's telepathy is needed to control Metroids. Mother Brain in general is strongly telepathic, as she is able to bend many creatures to her will at once. Her consciousness can also spawn vile reality warping beings like Fantoon which is likely facilitated by her strong telepathic powers. Why would the Chozo design a being with such strong telepathic abilities, unless they needed such abilities for their plan to control many Metroids at once? In the end, of course, this backfired, and Mother Brain joined forces with the Space Pirates after sprouting dangerous thoughts, the ultimate fate of the Sebesian Chozo being unknown. It could, however, be that they moved to CDR, and lurked in the shadows from there, biding their time over the course of the entire series up until Dread, away from the reach of Mother Brain and her space pirate allies. ZDR also features machines that are highly similar to Mother Brain, called Central Units. They too are brain-like computers that control portions of ZDR, though they seem less powerful. If the evil chose of ZDR indeed once lived on Zebes, it may have made the Central Units less powerful on purpose to avoid a re of the Mother Brain incident. Lastly, it is also of note that no other Chozo colonies are known to have reproduced the technology of Mother Brain. Only the Olympics, the Galactic Federation and its army, and the Space Pirates possessed similar technology. If all of this is true, this would mean that Samus was raised by the evil Chozo, and this is her reunion with them. An interesting aspect here is Samus's meeting with the leader of the evil Chozo near the start of the game, who says a phrase to her during it. Hadar Sen Olmen According to the Japanese website of Metroid Dread, 
Samus is familiar with this phrase, as she knows its meaning and significance. The phrase also seems tied to the evil Chozo leader in particular, due to the writing on their clothes. These are Chozo characters that have never been seen in the series before, however, a different set has. Shown in Zero Mission, Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, Older M and Samus Returns. A translation key for those characters was included in the concept art of Older M, and based on it, Twitter user Terra Wasabi deciphered the triangular characters shown in red. The phrase Hadar Sen Olmen seems to be spelled out on the clothes of the evil Chozo leader. So if Samus knows the phrase, it is highly likely that she has encountered this Chozo before. There is one elephant in the room that should be addressed before wrapping things up however, and that's the Metroid manga. This depicts the Sebesian Chozo as fairly benevolent and all dying to the space pirate invasion of Zebes. However, there is a reason as to why I have not brought up the manga at all so far in this video. There are numerous inconsistencies between the Metroid manga and the games. I intend to explore this in a future video, after Dread comes out. Though I would be remiss to not point out some of the biggest here for the sake of argument. The first is that as made clear in Zero Mission and Metroid Prime, Zebes was unnoteworthy to the Galactic Federation before it became known as a space pirate base at the start of Zero Mission. The Federation Army and Police even had to launch a desperate search for the space pirate base after they stole the newly discovered Metroids, before discovering the base to be Zebes. Yet in the manga, the events of the NES Metroid slash Zero mission are depicted as the second mission there by the Federation. The first taking place when the space pirates first invade Zebes and kill the Shozo. During this mission in the manga also, Samus and her colleagues in the Federation police learn from the Chozo that they made the Metroids for the sake of galactic peace. Samus later relays that information to her superior in the police when the Metroids become a problem for the Federation. Yet this is in stark opposition to the games, particularly Super Metroid. In the Japanese version of Super Metroid, Samus states that she first learned of the Metroid's existence during the events of Zero Mission, where she was sent to exterminate all Metroids on Zebes to keep them out of the hands of the Space Pirates. Samus and the Galactic Federation also only learn of the Metroid's artificial, chozo created nature after the researchers at Sarah's Space Colony study the baby Metroid Samus brought back from her mission to SR388. This is made explicit in the Japanese manuals of Super Metroid and Metroid Fusion. So. Who are the evil Chozo and what are they planning to do? According to this theory, they are a faction of the Chozo who eventually grew tired of the spiritualism and pacifism of their kin and started to adopt fundamentalist ideas. Yearning for the days of warrior Chozo supremacy, they started to develop their technology in secret and started to research bioweapons once they learned of the existence of the Metroids. First by studying a Metroid directly and then by creating Mother Brain in an attempt to control the Metroids. However, these attempts both failed due to extraneous circumstances, forcing these warmongers to first abandon their hiding place among the peaceful Chozo of Talon 4, and then abandon their fortress on Zebes, before settling on ZDR and biding their time in the shadows, as the space pirates that antagonized them were wiped out by Samus and the Galactic Federation. In red, they seem to be engineering a plot to obtain the last Metro DNA in existence, which resides within series protagonist Samus Aran which may serve as a painful reunion. Whether or not this is all true remains to be seen, but we shall find out soon enough. That will be all, until next time.